Hello, and welcome to Grant's Tech World. In this video, we're continuing a series of Linux-related topics with a program showcase of sorts. So today we're talking about Grape Juice, which allows you to run Roblox on Linux using Wine as the background. I've talked about Roblox in a previous video, specifically about its multiplayer aspect and how it's considered a metaverse, and so you can watch that in one of these corners. I don't know yet, I'll figure that out after editing. But the basic of it is that Grape Juice is here to use Wine to run Roblox on Linux. Now technically, running it on just Wine has always been possible, although it comes with allegedly a ton of issues. The goal of Grape Juice then is to simplify things down so that anyone can run it on their system, and it does help a ton. Um, and so today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Grape Juice and configure it, and then we're going to be comparing Grape Juice, which it has a few performance issues, especially in the area of visuals, to a native Windows install. Welcome to Grant's Tech World. I hope that you enjoy. So before we install Grape Juice and its dependencies, we first need to install Wine. Usually this will come pre-installed in your system, but in the case that it is not, I'm going to be showing you how to do that quick. So a great set of instructions can be found on the WineHQ wiki. So um, this website is wiki.winehq.org slash Ubuntu. Since the distribution I'm using, Linux Mint, is based on Ubuntu. The first thing we need to do is install i386 32-bit architecture. So basically most systems um, that use modern hardware are 64-bit, but you need to enable something in the system itself and in the softwares um, that allows you to run 32-bit applications. And so that's what this um, will do here. So all you have to do is open up a terminal, copy-paste that into the terminal. So I'll just go here, press Control-C, click on my terminal again, and then in the terminal, specifically on Linux Mint, you have to right-click and click Paste. So that's the first step. The next thing we'll have to do is get to the repository key. So I'm not going to actually do any of this because I already have it installed, but I'm just going to show you what things you will have to do. Then you have to download and get the repository key. So it's the same thing as before. You just copy and paste this into the terminal and press enter. So once that's done, you should have architecture um, for 32-bit and then also the repository key. Now we actually have to add that to our system. So all you have to do is um, at least I'm using Linux Mint 20.x, so 20. whatever. Um, but if you're using a different version, you use any of these. All I have to do is, like before, copy and paste that into the terminal. And then you can update your packages. And then all you have to do is, we want probably the stable branch. So we'll do sudo apt install. Install recommends ynhq stable. Press enter and you get everything done. At any point, if it asks you to agree to something or prompt it to continue, um, you'll either usually have to press enter or press Y to agree to something. Um, most of the time, especially with projects like Wine, um, they're all open source, so everything has been double checked and people know what's going on and someone will notify Wine if something malicious is happening with their program. Um, so everything will be pretty much safe. And so that's installing Wine. It's pretty simple, um, but Wine is the base of Grape Juice, and so you'll need to install that first. Okay, so now we'll actually start to get to installing Grape Juice. One thing to note is that all of these links will be in the description when the video publishes, so you don't have to look these up for yourself. I'll provide you with the exact links to go to, because some of these websites are a little bit um, loose on where you actually have to find stuff. So, um, if you watched my previous video actually on... Um, the AMD GPU script, you'll know that, especially when with open source things, there are many ways to do it. And usually, um, install instructions will have tons of information for those who want to do it a different way. But for us, we're actually just going to skip down to installing the Android, or the, installing the Grape Juice dependencies. So let's skip down to this. If you're running Linux Mint, you are a Debian Ubuntu derivative, and so thus you'll use this line. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it seems. Like with most of the things in this video, all you have to do is copy and paste. That's it. Um, and obviously press enter and stuff. So remember you can control C or right click to copy and then when you, let's say we just copy this here and go to a different tab in Firefox and we press paste, um, you can see that's how you'll put it in the terminal. And so 
all you got to do is copy this into your terminal and then press enter and it will automatically get everything that it needs um, to run anything. If you get any errors, there is documentation for you to reference, but if you've installed Wine how you should, and then you install this how you should, everything should work out. So now we have that done, we can skip down to installing grape juice. So the basic steps here are we have to clone the repository. So the repository is basically just the location of the program and its required um, files on the internet. So in particular, um, for grape juice, they store it on get. So you'll just do git clone, and then you'll type that in, and this will go into the dash tmp dash grape juice folder. Um, so once you clone that, then you have all the files in your system. That should take a while because you're physically downloading a lot of stuff from the internet. And then after you have cloned everything, um, you'll go to cd temp grape juice, Alternatively, um, and I'll show you this, so you can obviously cd slash temp, I don't think I have grape juice anymore, but now I'm in temp, or if you want to find that in a graphic way, you can go to your file explorer and go to home, or it would be on your file system. So you go to file explorer, you go to your file system, you go temp, and then wherever it's installed, and then where you find the grape juice, or where you want to um, install it to, you will right click and then open in terminal. So once we have that done, once we've gone to the directory where we have cloned the files to, then all we gotta do is run this install script. Um, one thing to note is that I believe you already installed um, yep, Python 3 right here. And so this Python script should just automatically run and install grape juice on your system. So um, it says, once the grape juice has been installed, you can proceed to the section below. But we're actually going to set up grape juice and then come back to the section um, so I can show you a few things. Okay, so once you have um, grape juice installed, you'll be met with a start screen. What you want to do first is go over, and this will say player. I've renamed it to Roblox player, but this will say player on your system. You'll go and click on this. And then what you want to do is you want to click on install Roblox. It will also prompt you when you initially set it up to install Roblox into here. This is basically just the little environment in which um, Roblox will run. And so you have to actually install the player into here. Once you've done that, you can always save your changes. And then um, you can also give different things here. So I want the experience player. That should always be checked because that's what actually runs Roblox. And then the desktop app app if you must. Um, this is basically just this right here, so you can see all of your um, games that you've recently played in one place. This will also run in the background um, when Roblox launches from the website. So we can skip the wine debugging settings, that doesn't matter, but the graphic settings you might want to change. So if you watched my previous video again um, on the AMD GPU script, You'll know um, I showed you how to install Vulkan. I would highly recommend it as Vulkan is a really new, really efficient API for um, rendering things. But if you don't want to use that, you can choose OpenGL or DirectX 11. DirectX 11 is also a good option if you have that installed. Um, and then this one, you would check if you had some weird stuff going on in your system and you think it might be because of your um, drivers, you'd select that there. But most people will choose one of these three options with whichever works best for you. Personally, for me, it's been Vulkan, um, but that's just because of my particular GPU. So once we've got that done, um, we can go and look at running Roblox. So obviously, all you got to do is you got to go into your Firefox or whatever browser you want, go to Roblox, and then the first time um, you run it, it will give you a little pop-up asking you if you want to run the Roblox player. You'll say yes, and you might also want to check save my changes. Um, but that's that. You have Roblox installed and it should run your system. However, like it said, you might need a patch build of wine for grape juice to work correctly. I know the first time that I tried installing grape juice, this didn't work out very well. So here's the basic process. They give you a link, and that link is good. I'll also put this in the description, um, but since I'm gonna include the other page, I don't know if it'll be necessary, um, but this is just something you know. So this is a patched version of Wine, and it fixes a few issues that you might be seeing. So 
Um, obviously, it tells you how to install Wine, and it does give you the same Wine HQ wiki that I showed you earlier, uh, this one being the Mewtwo one, but we want to skip to installing the Patch Wine. So this is only if you are having some decent issues. I know one issue is that when I right-clicked, my system would lock up and it would stop working on Roblox. Um, that could happen. There's a m bunch of other issues they say um, that you could have. But basically, the process is very similar to installing Wine for the first time. So you'll want to go to your slash temp folder, you want to get this um, install script, and then you want to install that. So it's really simple, it's just three lines in your terminal, um, and then it will give you a patch build of Wine. So it's really um, useful because it fixes a lot of things and it makes your experience quite a bit better. So. That's installing Wine. I personally think it works really, really well, but let's get to the conclusion and talk a little bit more about it. All right, so in my experience, once I've completed these steps and a few more, which if you're an AMD user on Linux, definitely check out this video. But um, if you're an AMD user on Linux, you might have to do a few extra steps. But when I complete all the steps, and especially in the grape juice side, things work pretty darn well. Um, it runs, and that's the big thing. Now, the first time I tried to install Grape Juice, it wasn't that great, but I've shown you all the tweaks you have to make um, in this video so that hopefully you get the same results as I do. So let's give a little bit of a verbal comparison. First, we'll start off with a really heavy title, Pilot Training Flight Simulator, um, which is a great, pro or great experience. I love it. It's kind of like if you blended Microsoft Flight Simulator with an arcade game. It's pretty good visuals. The flight simulation is okay, but it's more of just having a fun time flying cool planes. And so in that game, the big thing here is that since there's so many lines, you know, on the taxiways and runways, things look a little bit more jagged than they do on Windows. This might be because anti-aliasing has been turned off to preserve performance, or it's just running at a lower resolution. And so while it looks a little bit more jagged, that's just one thing. The other thing is that the render distance isn't quite as far, which in a game like that, it actually does kind of make a big difference, and it's a little irritating, but the one thing I can report is that the performance is pretty good. And so I would say it's comparable to what you get between a mobile phone, you know, my Google Pixel 5a is pretty at the low end, and my computer, which can max out the game's performance. So it's kind of in that middle range, and it runs pretty well. I enjoy the experience, and so I would say it definitely gets a pass, although being a little bit less visually appealing than Windows. Another game that might be a little more demanding in certain areas is Greenville. Greenville is a car RPing game, and I love it because, well, I can go fast. I mean, I own a car, but I can only go like 65 miles an hour. In Greenville, I get to go as fast as I want, wherever I want, whenever I want. And so in Greenville, the one big thing is the models. They don't look near as nice as they do on Windows, but obviously that's to be expected. And the same thing applies to the Pilot Training Flight Simulator game as well. And so the other thing I want to mention is that there are still a few stutters, but this seems to be an issue more on the Greenville side, and I'm not outing the developers. They put in a lot of work to this game, and it's really great. But the thing is that there are a few stutters which are also common on Windows, but they seem a little bit different on Linux. But in general, it runs really well, and I enjoy the game as well. And finally, let's talk about RPing, because if we know there's one thing, all the RPers love to use Linux. Wait. Are there no RPers on Linux? There might not be. But in a game like Welcome to Bloxburg, everything is moi. I'm pretty sure my settings are maxed out, cranked, I get ultimate performance all the time, and it looks really good. And so, that's probably just because Welcome to Bloxburg isn't as demanding as one of those other games, especially because the movement isn't as high and things aren't changing as much. And when they do change, they change in big chunks at a time, which doesn't usually cause stutters in Roblox. And so, that's my report. If you want near similar performance to a, I'm going to call it native, but really, Grape Juice is sort of a native version too. It's like Proton on Steam or Windows, you know, it's, it's confusing, but a native running of Linux, it's comparable, although slightly less. And so that's what I want to leave you with. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you consider checking out a few others, especially the ones I recommended today. 
Um, this video took a little bit of work to make, and so if you'd like to support me and the channel, make sure to subscribe and comment down below what your experiences are and if you have any issues, because I'd be willing to help you out if I can. So, this has been Grinch Tech World. Thank you so much for watching.